And our next guest has three ways to play the uncertainty. Right, what we've been talking about. Let's go to the charts with fun strats, Rob Slimer. Rob? Great, what thanks, Tyler. Tyler. So, charts? look, a tremendous amount of uncertainty, like everyone's talking about. Market's very volatile. We had all this damage happening here. A lot of really bad looking charts in a very short period of time. The levels are going to matter now over the next few days as the market comes down and retests these key levels. Let's talk about a few of them. So, we have this low here. That's 28, 22. 20, uh, that the market needs to hold on this pullback, and we're coming right down to those levels. That's going to be really critical here in the next couple of days. You've got a 200-day moving average sort of working its way through here. That level is around uh, 20, 2794, pardon me, and that's going to be really critical if folks are going to focus on. But the one that I think is going to be incredibly important are these two lows, the June low and the May low. And so if Guys, right, we're going to get a spike in volatility. We're probably going to see the market move down to this 27, uh, I believe that's 27, 28, I think is the low. And that's going to be really critical as well. So watch those levels. The key upside level here is around 29.43. So now let's step back and take a look at where that plays in a bigger picture, in the bigger market cycle. Now, we've talked about this many times. We think that the lows in 2016 off that 200-week or four-year moving average is an important cycle low. And we thought the same thing here coming off the lows in December. And so far, that's been a decent call. But now we're starting to see all this data unwind. Here's what's interesting. Back in 2016, right in August, we saw another peak. And this momentum indicator barely rallied up to the halfway up the range and it failed. That's exactly what we're seeing here. So as we move through all this uncertainty, we have Brexit and a whole bunch of other issues to face. We sort of have a very similar pattern going into the balance of Q3, where I think we get a lot of churn. Now, the correction there obviously went into the election, and we got that 6% drop towards the end of the move. We have already have that in place. So again, these levels, that 28.22 and 27.28 are going to be very, very important. I think the market is going to hold at those levels. Now, how do you play it? Lots of uncertainty. Do you want to be long cyclicals? Do you want to be long defensive? Or do you want some sort of hybrid? So we've been fans of the semiconductors all the way through, and now they're coming down to an absolutely critical level. I believe this level up here is 114. I think this level down here is at, uh, I believe that's 107, and that's going to be really important support, and it needs to hold. If it doesn't hold that, it's probably on its way down to this sort of 97, 98, pardon me, on the, on the writing there. So very key levels. I like it as a long right here. It's very high risk. It's not for everybody. If you don't like the cyclicals in the market, you don't want to play it. But for traders, very tight stops. It's an interesting trade. I continue to like semiconductors into the year end. Now, on the other side of that, let's take a look at the defensive side, because I think what's happening with gold is really interesting. Now, it's had a move, right? We've had this move from, you know, out of this trading range, somewhere around 25, and I think this level up here is around 30, 31. It's had a bit of a bounce.